here this morning. I tell you that um, uh, that meeting last week was just so wonderful, yes. so powerful. And sometimes after you've had a great meeting like that, there is a tendency for a spiritual letdown. You've been riding so high and then you just kind of drop. And I'm hoping and I'm trusting today that we are not going to drop. And we're going to continue to ride the crest of that spiritual high. And continue to move forward in our quest to serve God and to do more and more in the kingdom. You know, when I was thinking what else to say, Brother Pretty had challenged us in so many areas to be careful, watchful, protect the truth, respect God, watch out for Satan. And there's just so many things that he tried to do in those brief lessons. But, uh, and I was wondering, what can I say? What left, what is there left to say? And I had a brief encounter with a new convert in my office. And I was left with thinking, it's so wonderful and a blessing to find the Lord. The God will lead you somewhere to find out what the Word of God is saying. And that is a blessing. And if you haven't taken the time to thank the individuals, whether it be your own family, friends, associates, that brought the Word to you, you need to do so. Because that is a special blessing. So today we're going to try to endeavor to encourage us to continue to do our best for God. To do our best for the kingdom. This lesson is going to try to help you continue to be the type of Christian that you ought to be. So we turn to our main text, or say the more lengthy text, 2 Timothy 1, 7 through 10. You have it. It's on the board. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the affliction, afflictions of the gospel, according to the power of God. Verse number nine, which is our key verse for our lesson today. Who have saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given in Christ Jesus before the world began. Now that is a challenge, and that is a calling that God has given us that we ought to be special and holy and we ought to understand the sacrifices that have been made on our behalf. Right. Not due to what we did or what we could do, but based on God's eternal plan of redemption and his grace 
that's going to cover and save the whole world. God intended for us to be placed in a special position and to be his special people and to be his special conduit for others to be converted, redeemed, and for others to have salvation. We ought to be thankful for the wonderful relationship that we have and the great opportunities that we have to grow and mature at this great congregation. We ought to be thankful for the opportunities that the leadership provide us, that we can study and enrich ourselves and be better than we have been in the past. Amen. If you look at the text, we observe several things immediately. It says in verse 7, God has given us something. He's given us courage. He's given us the courage not to be afraid. He's given us the power, love, and the self-discipline. We may not have been uh, we may not have been a person that had discipline before, but God gives us everything that we need. God empowers us. He empowers us with the spirit and of fear, of not having fear and not being timid. We ought not be afraid. We ought not be ashamed. We ought to be willing to go and to share and to talk and to talk to people that we have never met as well as talk to those that we know. God expects us not to shy away from our spiritual responsibility just because of feelings of inadequacy or feelings that we just can't do it. He empowers us. He has high expectations of us in his kingdom. That's why he gave us the three things that are the keys to our success. He gave us power, love, and self-discipline. All three things are a gift from God and they enable us to rise to the call of responsibility to teach others. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And he meant that. But he knew that folks that were going to go were going to be us and human and frail. So he empowers us to know that we can succeed. We can do what God asks. We can. And it doesn't have to be preachers and elders and deacons, but you can. And verse number eight clearly outlines the intention of God in Christ to use us in the promotion of the kingdom. Don't be afraid or ashamed to tell others about your commitment to Christ with the strength that God gives you, with the power and the love he shows you, with the self-disciplines of the spiritual mind. Be ready to suffer with me, or as Paul says, with me for the proclamation of the gospel or the good news. In verse number nine, I want Brother Sterling to read it off the board. It should be underlined. Yes, sir. It is God who saved us. It is God. I, 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 sometimes I just like to focus on a couple of words. Right. It is God. Yes. Sometimes we get confused and we might think it's something else. We might think it's us, our jobs, our money, our status, our occupation, our, 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 our career goals, but it's none of that. It is very simple and it's encapsulated in these first three words. It is God. And you know what, when you're going through the struggles today, and when you're going through uh, challenges today, yes. I want you to just remember these three words. It is 
God. Yeah. And I know when you're going through hard times, and when you're going through pain and agony, you understand it's not yourself. You understand it's not other folk, but you understand that it is God. Yeah. And so in this here situation here, when it comes to doing God's will and being put in the place of evangelism, it's God. It's his will. Keep reading, Brother Sterling. It is God who saved us. It's God who saves us. And chose us to live a holy life. And he chose us to live a holy life. God chose me. Maybe somebody else didn't like me. Maybe somebody else didn't think I was good enough. Maybe somebody else didn't feel I was adequate enough. But it was God that chose me. He chose me to this calling. Let me tell you something. This is a calling. This is an occupational call. It's something that we must do. We must do more for God. We must expand the kingdom. We cannot sit idly by. It is the call of God. He chose us for this purpose. Amen. Keep reading. He did this not because we deserved it. He didn't do it because we deserved it. But because that was his plan long before the world began. Now, I don't know how you can plan dealing with man and dealing with the failures of humanity and the egos and the lack of ego and the inferiorities. But he had a plan to use man. But he knew man without him was inadequate. Man without God is nothing. That's why in verse 7, he gave him power, love, and self-discipline. Because without God, man is nothing. And this plan was going to fall flat. So God had to invigorate his people. And that's who we are. We are his people. We got his plan and his purpose, and God instills in us what we need to survive. Amen. So the call for us is stand up, be accountable, yes. do what God wanted you to do, because God called you for this purpose. Amen. 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 Specific purpose. Self-discipline, great works, trying to utilize us in this ministry. And we ought to be passionate about it. We ought to have integrity about it. In the, read, keep reading, brother. To show us, Want to show his love and uh, kindness to us through Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. So, I'm thinking about this. And I understand that God had a plan. And he had called us and called us to this plan. And he called us to do some great things. Jesus came to this earth so that he could save the people from their sins in Matthew 1 21. And we have to understand that Jesus is indeed the Savior of the world, John 4 and 42. And I'm telling you that if Jesus is going to save the world, he's going to need us to do our part in letting the world know about God. Because when the new convert came to me, they said, what about those folks who don't know? What about those folks who came here? What happens to them? And I said, I know God intends for every person to have an opportunity to know him, even if it's just a Bible sitting in a hotel room. That's an opportunity, whether they take it or not. That's an opportunity that they can know what God said. So I want to use, this is a two-part lesson. Part one is this morning, and part two is this evening. So if you want to finish to hear the rest of it, you got to come back. <laughs> Lesson is entitled, Rising to the Call Before Succumbing to a Fall. Rising to the Call. God has called us before you stumble and fall. 
See, there is a tendency to think that we cannot succeed. Sometimes we focus on failing way too much. God intends for us to rise this morning. He intends for us to rise and live out the full meaning of his call. He does not intend for us to fall to the spiritual occasion. He encourages us to do better and to do more for the cause of the kingdom. Matthew 28, 19 to 20, go therefore and teach all nations is not just a nice verse, but it is our calling card, our marching orders to go out and teach the world. Amen. We have that responsibility. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 it says, Wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and fear. Yes. When you do God's will, you are serving him. Amen. When you tell folk and others, you're serving him. Amen. We need to serve him reverently and with godly fear and respect. Yes. Yes. You see, this kingdom is God's. And if we want to be a part of this kingdom, we're going to have to adopt and accept those things that God wants us to do. Yeah. We can't blame our fall or our mistakes on our past and on our background. I've said this before and I mean it. We can't let a bad beginning affect our present and our future. You see, Jesus chose a ragtag group of disciples. <laughs> They were a cornucopia of individuals from different walks of life. Yeah. And, and, and because of where they came from, some folk thought they would be ineffective. Seven of the 12 disciples were fishermen. Two of the fishermen actually were businessmen that owned fisheries, and they employed other fishermen. Matthew belonged to a class of Jewish tax collectors or uh, that extorted money from travelers. Publicans or tax collectors were despised, right. regarded as a traitor to their own people. Mm -hmm. Even their money was considered unclean, and those that were taxed avoid even giving them change because they didn't want to touch their money. They were considered to be that kind of evil individual. Simon the Canaanite, he earned the, time, the title of a zealot. He officially lo had loyalty to the faith and he, of Israel. And he was even to the point about he promoted rebellion and fighting among the Jews. He was zealous, stubborn, and he was one that rebelled against the Roman government during that time. See, this is the kind of uh, person that Jesus brought into his uh, uh, employ or his uh, servitude. Mm -hmm. You see, the rest of those disciples, they were either fishermen or just humble men, shepherds or whatever. The Bible doesn't really quite say. Mm -hmm. They were tradesmen, perhaps. They were just your regular, ordinary guys that you meet along the way. Yeah. But God chose them to be his disciples, his apostles, Amen. and then help promote and bring about the kingdom. Amen. Why did I say all that? God has chosen you. Whoever you are, wherever you come from, whatever your background is, whether it's been a good one, whether it's been a bad one, where there's been troubled, mm -hmm. tried, tested, whatever, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. God has chosen you to be his servant mm -hmm. and in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Rich or poor, educated or not, God in Christ can use us. Mm -hmm. Put us to work. You see, it would have been great if all of us had the same pedigree and background. Mm -hmm. It would have been wonderful. 
If we were all born into pleasant and ideal circumstances, but there are no guarantees in life. There are no guarantees in how or when or where you come into this world. The spiritual home, whether you're with God fearing parents or grandparents, or you come from a troubled home life with no parents and maybe here and there and in a foster care or whatever, if you come to Jesus, he makes the whole uh, playing field equal. Yes. Brings us all in under the umbrella of God as his fellow brothers and sisters in the church. Amen. If you come to Jesus, then you, whoever you are, you are now acceptable to God and you're part of the call to be something more than what you have been. Yes. When you come to Jesus, you now are ready to assume the responsibility to rise to the call of Christ. God will put you to work and you need to understand you're going to have work to do. You're going to have some work to do. In James chapter 2 verses 26, the Bible says plainly, for as the body without the spirit is dead, faith without works is dead also. Amen. You cannot claim faith and not have works to support that faith. That's right. Otherwise, it's just some cheap talk. And I know about you, cheap talk don't mean nothing. Yes, cheap talk don't mean nothing. Yes, now, I know that Brother Sterling uh, sells real estate. Now, he can go with me and we can look at a thousand houses. <laughs> and I can say I want to buy one. But if I don't have credit worthiness, <laughs> and even though I tell them, I'm going to pay you. Yeah, I'll pay you. I'll pay for the house. People are not, uh, banks are not going to loan against words. They're not going to loan against nothing but deeds. And that's, a, that's capital, cash money deeds. That's what they're looking at. You can't go in there and make a deal. Now, see, when you're dealing with parents, you can make those kind of foolish deals. <laughs> I need to borrow $1,000, I'll pay you $100 a month. You know, you're, you're, I don't know, you have, anybody have kids? Yeah. <laughs> they come up with some, some of the most crazy, uh, entertaining uh, financial arrangements. <laughs> they do. Let me borrow $500 and I'll pay you back five nickels at a time. <laughs> And they make you, they think, they think that you want yours paid back in bits and pieces. Now they need lump sums. But they want you to give, take it back in crumbs. If I give you a loaf of bread, you can't give me a piece of bread for a thousand days. Expect me to say, nah, I got a whole loaf. Now, that's something totally different. <laughs> Cheap talk. Cheap talk. If you don't have faith to go along with it, it's just some cheap talk. Yes, sir. Cheap talk. You see, if you want to do more today, you have to put in the work. It's not going to happen by accident. Don't be like the one talent man, so focused on failure that he was satisfied not even trying to succeed. You can't worry about failure. You can't worry about temporary setbacks. When you're being called to excellence of service, you're just going to have to go out and not be afraid. You see, we are to be called today for a greater calling. And we're going to have to forget our past. You cannot work from the past looking forward. But you must work from the present and look forward. Right. In Philippians 3, 13 through 14, there it says, underline, forget those things which are behind, good or bad. Right. In Paul's case, it could have been good and bad. Right. But whatever it is, you can't let that affect your future. Forget the past, good and bad. Rise to the call and don't worry about falling 
or failing. In fact, we must press, strive, strain, reach, and make the effort. In verse, in the verse 14, it says, I press toward, as Philippians 3, 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. The Greek word used here is delco, which means to pursue as in a foot race, speeding on earnestly and methodically, and never, never, never give it up. Yes. To be determined to do more. It's an incessant cry to move forward and not backwards. Yes, Amen. Live up to God's expectation and live down to others' expectations. Right. Live up to your own expectation. Live up to your responsibility. Live up to God's expect. He said, I called you to a higher calling. Yeah. Don't go backwards. Don't go backwards. Sometimes it's so easy to slip and go backwards. In Jeremiah 7, verse number 24, the Bible says, Brother Sturgeon and Brother Dave. But they hearken not, nor incline their ears. That's, what, that's the first part. That's the first thing. That's trouble. They wouldn't listen. When you won't listen to God, you got trouble. When you don't listen to what you what the Holy Spirit is telling you, you know you're wrong, and you're doing stuff anyway, and you're not listening to the words and the voice of God within you, something's wrong. Yeah. He said they wouldn't hearken, they wouldn't incline their ear, but walking in the counsel in their, in the imagination of their evil heart. That's trouble. Mm -hmm. When you doing what you think you should be doing, when you're using your own self, in the imagination of their own evil heart, that's where they were operating. Yeah. They wouldn't listen to God. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't hear the word. They were doing what they thought Amen. and what they think. Yeah. And sometimes that's what gets us in a mess yeah. when we are following after what we think. Right. Well, it is really okay. You ever hear people say that? <laughs> it's really okay to uh, not give and that you don't. Yeah, I've heard people give justification for everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Well, when I needed to fix my car, how could I give to God? <laughs> Without a job, I couldn't give to him anyway. We try to justify everything. I mean, we try, when we start thinking to our own self and listen to what we got to say, well, I need this money to pay down on a vacation program, and I, I, I got to pay before the 14. Yeah, well, that's fine. That's fine, you gotta do that. But you should not take it from God. Amen. Stop listening to yourself and listen to God. Amen. And the evilness of the heart said, don't do that, don't do that. Don't do that, you need to try to get away from that as best you can and start thinking about what God wants you to do. Okay, keep reading, brother. I and went that. backwards and not forward. Okay, that was the part I was trying to get to. <laughs> when you don't listen to God, and you start listening to yourself, you're on your way backwards. You're slipping out of here, you're going backwards. And there are things that I have done that I knew I had no business doing. And I tell you, I might have survived it. I didn't get killed doing it, but I was hurt. And I was set back spiritually and sometimes physically because of what I did. Right. Yeah. Because I did not hearken to the counsel of God. Sometimes you know when you're in the wrong place, yes. at the wrong time, right. with the wrong folks. Right. Don't tell me you don't know that. <laughs> I knew when I was there and I was comfortable, but I was wrong. So. God expects a great effort. He expects it. In Luke chapter 12, 48, is a, 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 a beautiful thought. I extrapolated it from the context just so I could use it here for my point. In Luke 12, verses 48, what does it say? But he that knew not uh -huh. and did commit things worthy of stripes uh -huh. shall be beaten with few stripes. Okay. He didn't know. And he was, it was worthy of stripes 
Because I didn't know he got few stripes. Read the next. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. Think about that. All that God has done for you. And when, the, when it comes down to it, he's going to expect equity, equal amount of effort, equal amount of service, equal amount of doing. If you haven't done that, you've already stole and done wrong for God. Amen. Now, I didn't say the man who didn't know what going to get his stripes. Oh, he's going to get beat. He just don't get beat as bad. Now, any of us who have been whipped or spanked, we know that when we did know, it was worse off. When we didn't know, we may not have got it so bad. My own father, I remember uh, he tells me that I was in a bad fix, had transgressed some kind of a law, family order law, and I was supposed to be beaten with some kind of strike. And evidently when he came to me, he asked the one question that exonerated me from my beating. He said, did you know any better? And I looked at him evidently, and I said, Daddy, I didn't know no better. <laughs> now, I don't know if he had to reflect on whether or not he had told me, or whether or not I didn't know I was lying, or I was using crocodile tears. I don't know. Well, he told me that he walked away. I didn't know no better. That's all, you don't use that escape card one time. <laughs> That's when you get out of jail, free cards of monopoly, you don't use it one time. <laughs> because the next time, I can't say that. <laughs> and so sometimes, you know, you say, I didn't know you're gonna get some beaten. But when you have been given as much as God has given you, there's no excuse for you. Yes. To whom much is given, much will be required. Yes. And whom men have committed much, they're going to ask them more. Now, if men are going to ask you more, if men give you something, they want something. Right? When a man give you something, he wants something. With women, it's the same thing. If a man give a woman something, he probably wants something. On a job, if, a, if they give you a paycheck, they want something. And the more they give you, the more they want. And why isn't that way with God? who showers down blessings on you every day. Amen. Blessings you can see and those you can't see. Amen. Woke you up in the morning and you may not have been feeling 100%, but you still were feeling something. Amen. And yet you don't want to give God back anything. He has a call for us and he's asking us to rise up to the call. And the man preached last week, let's do more for God. It may have fell, fell on a deaf ear, but we need to say, not with me it didn't. Right. I embrace it. I want to do better. Yeah. I want to be what God wants me to be. Yes. Whether I'm a Christian, or whether I'm faithful, that's important. Mm -hmm. But I need to figure out my spiritual destiny. Amen. I know one thing, my spiritual destiny is not birth, based on my birthright, birth order, or birthplace, but I must take responsibility for myself. Life is what I make it after I come to Jesus. We need to take our spiritual development seriously. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 12, you can write it down, we're going to read it. Wherefore, my beloved, uh -huh. and ye have always obeyed, yes. not as in my presence only, mm -hmm. but now much more in my absence. What, 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 what shall I do? Work out your own salvation with fear and truth. Take it serious. Take your spiritual life seriously. Evaluate what you're doing. Here it says, work out your own. Get out of other folks' business. Brother Pretty was very clear about getting in other folks' business. Now, I don't know if somebody had been in his business and he didn't like it, but he sure made it clear, stay out of other folks' business. Oh, we always got some statement to make about what somebody else do. 
I know Brother Mo can do better than what he do. I know Brother Sterling, I know he can do better. I mean, we always in somebody else's business. Stay out of other folks' business and be concerned about your own spirituality. What can you do to make it better? Amen. What can you do? Amen. Stay in your own lane. I heard, heard a judge say that. She wrote a book called Stay in Your Own Lane. The problem is we're driving all over the lane. Amen. Bothering everybody about what they should be doing. I know sometimes it's good advice, but you know what? Advice is only good when folks ask for it. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's true. I don't want your advice. <laughs> I don't want your advice. <laughs> now, if I ask for your advice, you can give it to me. If I need your two cents, then you gotta give it to me. But if I ask you for it, you can, but don't be getting it. Hey, brother, I just want to tell you something. Don't tell me. Don't, what? <laughs> I, I could be a personal problem, I guess. I, I could be a personal problem, I guess. Uh, but, but you know what? It's like, if you got some advice, wait till somebody asks you for it. Uh, uh, make sure you do that. Now, as parents, uh, you, you have a, a clause, you don't have to do that. Parents just give advice. When parents see a situation, they just start advising right away. I get advice even to this day, and my mother will stop in the middle and say, Oh, I'm sorry. Now, she already gave the advice. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, just disregard what I just said. <laughs> yeah, like, sure, I'm sure I can. But the bottom line is that, you know, the parents are going to give advice from time to time. Let's keep moving on. I'm going to try to hurt and finish here. Probably will not finish, evidently. Planned on it. I don't think I'm going to. Well, I want to talk about barriers we need to overcome yes. when rising to the call. Yes, sir. But if I try to rush through it, I'm not going to be able to do it in injustice. So I work, I will, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to it. From our text, God, it is God that have called us mm -hmm. to a higher calling yes. for his purpose that he purposed to for himself through God and by his grace. And that part about the grace, that has to do with this. You can't earn it. What God conceived in his mind from the very beginning of time is something you can't buy. You can't earn. There's nothing you can do. But even though he's going to give it to you, he still has expectations yes. that you understand the significance of the calling. He said a higher call because he's asking us to do more, be more than what we have ever conceived that we could do for him. So when we look on that board and it says do more for God, I want us to rise to the challenge. Now, I don't want us to fall. We're going to talk about falling tonight. And we'll come back to this other part next week or whatever. Rise to the call. Amen. Don't succumb to falling. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, while you're rising, you're going to fall from time to time. Yes, sir. But you need to get up. Yes, don't stay down. Amen. Don't stay down. So when you're trying to live a Christian life, it's going to be about ups and downs. Every time you rise, you might fall. But keep getting up. Amen. Keep getting up. Amen. Keep on repenting your sins. Keep getting back on the right page with God. Keep trying. So you made a mistake last week when you did something wrong with the wrong person in the wrong place and the wrong, at the wrong time at the wrong time, hour of the night. Okay, you made a mistake. That's fine. It's time to repent of that. Don't stay down. Continue to rise. Continue to get up. Because God has called you for something special. Amen. If you're a member of the Church of Christ, and you know you haven't done right. Today you need to get it right with God. Repent of your sins, Luke 13, 3 and 5. Ask God to help you. Let somebody pray for you. John, James chapter 5, 16. The effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. That's what we're talking about. If you're falling, get up. While you're rising, guess what? When you go up, guess what? 
Sometimes you gotta come down. Yes. When you're moving up, sometimes you gotta come down. But just don't stay down. Amen. Keep getting up. That's right. And if you're not a member of the Church of Christ, then you are not even a part of this call. God is calling you to something greater. First of all, you gotta respond to the call of the gospel. Amen. The word of God. Jesus, in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, how he lived, died, and rose again, that's the gospel. He did it for you and for me. And you accept that. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You confess it. You repent of your sin. I'm sorry I've been sinning. I want to change. Then you'll be willing to obey him through baptism. Acts 2, 38, 37 and 38. After they heard the sermon, they were pricked in their hearts. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent and do what? Be baptized. Why baptism? Because it's a burial in Romans 6, 3 through, uh, 3 through 6. It's a burial. You're buried with him in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Why baptism? 1 Peter 3, 20 and 21. It is what saves you. Why baptism? Baptism because it places you in the kingdom of God. And then you can rise to the call because there's high expectations on you from God. Amen. So we're going to sing a song, I Am Resolved. I'm going to ask you right now. Be resolved today to answer the call because it's a higher calling. If you want to rise to the call today, you got to get your life right with God. If it's not right, come on now. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. God's not giving you the spirit of fear. He's giving you power, love, and what? Self-discipline. And you can use that today to get right with God.